Hi everyone, my name is Marinx Pasevic and in this video I will show you how to execute background work easily in .NET with the Hangfire library. Almost all applications need to do some sort of background work and there are many situations where we need to keep that work away from the spotlight. Sometimes it's a long running task that slows down the application flow. An example might be uploading a bunch of photos to a social media platform. We can do that upload task behind the scenes and the user can continue the browse freely. We may also need to schedule some tasks to run every hour, week or maybe a month, like watching out for inactive users or sending subscription invoices. We can handle all these tasks with a good background task scheduler that takes care of the details for us. This is where Hangfire shines. As usual, if you like the video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps me a lot and supports the channel as well. Now, let's continue with this topic. Hangfire is an open source and well-documented task scheduler for ASP.NET Core. It's multi-threaded, easily scalable and offers a variety of job types. It's well-structured and simple to use and it provides a powerful performance. There are three main components of Hangfire architecture. The client, the server and the storage. Hangfire client represents the actual libraries inside our application. The client creates the job, serializes its definition and makes sure to store it in our persistent storage. The storage is our database. It uses a couple of designated tables that Hangfire creates for us. It stores all the information about our jobs, definitions, execution status, etc. Hangfire supports both relational databases and no SQL options so we can choose which one works for our project. Finally, we have the Hangfire server that has the task of picking up job definitions from the storage and executing them. It's also responsible for keeping our job storage clean from any data that we don't use anymore. Also, on this diagram, you can see the workflow, which is a pretty simple one. After we specify our task in the code and call the appropriate Hangfire method to create it, the Hangfire client creates the job and stores it in the database. The control then returns to the application so the main thread can continue with its work. When a job is in the storage, the server picks it up and creates a background thread to process the fetched job. Ok, with this theory out of the way, I can move on with the code. Just before I do that, I would like to let you know about our products. Currently, we have the Ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API book and the Blazor WebAssembly course you can use to create client c apps without using JavaScript. Of course, we are working on new ones, so always check the links in the description below. Ok, I already have prepared a web API application. And the first thing I will do is install the required packages. I will start with the Hangfire package. And let's install it. As you can see, we have the hangfire.aspnet core package as well. But the hangfire package already has the reference towards the hangfire asp.net core package and the SQL server package, which is perfect for us as I am going to use the SQL database. I also need one more package, the system data SQL client, to enable hangfire to access the database. With both packages installed, Let's configure Hangfire. So, let's update the app settings JSON file. Inside the connection string object, I will add the SQL connection string. Just a note that you must have an already created database, so feel free to do that first. After I'm done with the Hangfire installation and the preparation of the database connection, we also need to configure it in the program class. Let's call the add hangfire method to add the hangfire services inside the service collection. Also, I can provide a configuration here. And for that, I will call the use simple assembly name type serializer method and the use recommended serializer settings method. These two are the standard part of the configuration. Also, let's call the use SQL service storage method and provided the connection string that I specified inside the app settings.json file. I also have to add the hangfire server 
with the add hang fire server method. The hang fire server in our project is going to live inside the application. Additionally, I want to update our request processing pipeline with the use hang fire dashboard method. With it, we can easily monitor our jobs later on. This dashboard is by default configured to be accessible only locally, but if you want to access it remotely, you can configure that as well. However, it exposes a lot of sensitive information, so always be careful with that configuration. Now, I can run the application, and Hangfire will automatically check our designated storage for the necessary tables. And if they don't exist, it will create them for us. So that's it as far as configuration goes, and we are all set to start using Hangfire. Now let's quickly inspect the Hangfire dashboard and see how we can create some background tasks. If our application is started and we navigate to HTTPS localhost 5001 slash Hangfire, we can see the very useful dashboard included out of the box. Within the dashboard, we can see all the running and scheduled jobs that we create with our Hangfire client. We can also monitor servers, job retries, and failed jobs, and keep an eye on all jobs in the queue. I'll cover the other tabs a bit later when I try out the different types of jobs Hangfire supports. But for now, let's quickly check the Service tab. Here, you can see the server that is running in our test application. If we had more server instances running, we would also see them listed here. Hangfire checks server usage periodically, so if there is a server that is not in use anymore, it will be automatically removed from the list. Now, let's execute some jobs. Hangfire supports different job types that we can use for different occasions. Let's see how to implement them easily and verify their execution in the dashboard. To start testing the job scheduling, let's create a services folder. And then, a new interface named iJob Test Service. Here, I will create four members to test different job types. So, let's add the fire and forget job member, then the recurring job member, the next one is the delayed job member, and finally the continuation job member. After the interface is done, I can create a new class and name it Job Test Service. This class will inherit from the iJob Test Service interface I've just created. Also, let's implement the interface. Now, I will create a new read only logger field here and use a constructor to initialize it just with the generic type parameter here. In the real world, inside methods like these, there may be code that uploads a photo or checks for user inactivity. But in our example, I will simply log a convenient message in each of the methods. Nothing more is needed for our tests. After defining the service class, let's register it as a service. To be able to use our new service with dependency injection, I will register our interface implementation using the add scope method. Ok, now I can test the jobs inside the already created controller. The first job type that I want to cover is the fire and forget job. When we create this type of job, the server executes it only once as soon as it can. So let's first add the private read only I job test service here, named job test service, and also I need the private read only I background job client field, named background job client. This service will provide methods for creating background jobs with Hangfire. Ok, let's also use a constructor to initialize both these fields. Now. Let's add a test endpoint that will help us schedule the job. As you can see, this is a get action, and I will use the injected hangfire interface to schedule this type of job. For that, I will call the enqueue method, 
and pass the fire and forget job service method as the argument. This convenient and queue method takes care of creating and saving the job definition to our storage and of course enqueuing it for processing. Now let's run the app and test this by executing this request using Swagger. As a result, this is going to create our first job with Hangfire. Ok, let's check the job in the dashboard. I will navigate to the Jobs tab, where it should now be visible under the Succeeded section. Here we can execute any succeeded job again manually if you'd like, with the Requeue Jobs button. Also, if I check the logs, I can see that the method is really executed. Great, let's continue. Delayed tasks are the ones that we surely want to execute, but just not right now. We can schedule them at a certain time, maybe a minute from now or three months from now. To test this type of job, let's create a new endpoint in our job test controller. Here, we are again using the iBackground job client interface. This time, however, I am not calling the NQ method. Instead, I use the schedule method and pass two arguments. Our delayed job service method call and the delay. The schedule method will create the job definition and save it, but it will also make sure to schedule it in the queue at the specified time. Now, when we send a GET request to this endpoint, we schedule a job 60 seconds in the future. It shows up in the scheduled section of the dashboard's jobs tab. After it executes successfully, it will be moved to the succeeded tab. This will be done in a one minute period but I can execute it now. You see, there are no more scheduled jobs. And in the succeeded tab, you can see it was executed successfully. Awesome, let's go back to our app. We schedule our recurring jobs so they can repeat in a certain interval. For those types of tasks, Hank Fire make use of cron software utility. To schedule this job, I will need a different Hank Fire service. So let's add another private read only field of the i recurring job manager type named recurring job manager. Also, I need to update the parameters here with this i recurring job manager type parameter, and I have to initialize the new field. This service exposes useful methods for handling recurring jobs, and I will use it to schedule a new job. With this done, I can create a new endpoint to test the job. Here, I will use the new service and call the add or update method. I will pass a job ID of a choice, our recurring job method call, and the cron interval as arguments. The hangfire method will create a new job with the specified ID or update an existing one. In this example, I will just create the job for the first time. Ok, let's run the app again and use Swagger to test this. After sending a GET request to this endpoint, our recurring job becomes visible under the Recurring Jobs tab in the dashboard. While this shows that we scheduled our job to repeat at the specified time, every time the server processes it, the processed instance will become visible in the succeeded section of the Jobs tab. So let's not wait the whole minute for the job to be executed and execute it on our own. You see, the job is still here, but also I can find it inside the succeeding jobs. Great. The last type of job I will cover is the continuation job. Its main feature is that it chains together task execution. With it, we can get two jobs to run one after the other in continuation. We already have a method for this type of job prepared in our service class. So let's use it here. In the create continuation job endpoint, I again use the iBackgroundJobClient service. First, I use it to create a simple fire and forget job. I want this job to be a trigger for the next job, so I make sure to collect the ID that the NQ method returns. After it's created, I call the continue job with method and pass the job ID of the created job along with our continuation job method call. 
The continue job read method will make sure to chain our two jobs together. That's all it takes. I can again run the app and test this endpoint with the Swagger by sending the GET request. If I check out the succeeded section of the dashboard job tab, we can see that our two jobs run one after the other. But also, you see that our recurring job was executed one more time as well, as a result of the previous test of the recurring job execution. Great, everything works here. So, you learned a lot about this simple and powerful library called Hangfire. We know now how to set it up in our ASP.NET Core application and how to use it to schedule different types of jobs. Now, it's time for you to schedule some background tasks. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and the bell button to receive notifications of my future videos. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for new ones to come. Until then, all the best.